All right, welcome to 4.6, performing operations with super complex numbers. So in today's lesson, we have three objectives. We're going to be simplifying square roots of negative numbers. So we've been do dealing with some square roots before and simplifying those, um, but we haven't been taking square roots of negatives. We'll do that today. Second objective, plot those complex numbers in the complex plane. Complex plane kind of looks like an XY coordinate plane like this thing over here, except for a wee bit different. Um, and then finding the absolute value. So absolute value as just like it is with real numbers, how far that thing is away from zero. And then finally objective three, add and subtracting, multiplying, and dividing complex numbers. So we're gonna warm up first talking about a shape that's in this picture, this really complex shape called the Mandelbrot set. Now it's named after a mathematician, French mathematician named Benoit Mandelbrot, if I said that correctly. Um, he's dead now, so he's not like going to get on to me for not pronouncing his name correctly. But anyway, a set in mathematics is just a collection of numbers. Okay, so just like the real numbers is a collection of numbers. The Mandelbrot set is the same kind of thing. So this Mandelbrot set, this set of numbers, whenever you graph it in the complex plane, makes a really super complicated and interesting picture, as you can see right here. So there's a rule involved, a mathematical rule involved, to see if a number is part of the Mandelbrot set or not. And it's called a recursive formula. So a recursive formula, uh, it uses iteration. Whenever you find an answer, you plug the answer back into the equation again over and over again. It's very similar to how we were using the Babylonian method to approximate square roots. So to see if a number is part of the set, we're going to use this formula right down here at the bottom. So z, z is a complex number. z sub n plus 1 is equal to z squared plus c. So let me explain that a little bit more. So C is the number that you're trying to see if it is in the Mandelbrot set. And C sub zero, we're always gonna start with zero. So let's say we're gonna test out to see if the number one is a member of the Mandelbrot set. So one is gonna be my C value, but I, and I'm gonna plug this in right here. And the z sub naught, I'm going to plug this in as a zero right here. So take a look. So z sub naught is zero. So I plug it into this formula to find z sub one. I'm going to put that zero in there and square it plus my c value. I still get one back. Okay, so far. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to plug it back into the equation again and see what I get. And that's going to give me z sub two. So to get z sub 2, I'm going to take the answer that I got before, this 1, and plug it in and square it. So 1 squared is 1, plus 1 gives me 2. Now to find z sub 3, I'm going to take that 2 and plug it back into the equation again. So it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 is 5. Okay, so to get the next one, I'm going to take this 5, stick it back into the equation, and square it. And I get 5 squared plus 1 is 26. So just so that you understand this, see if you can find out what z sub 5 is going to be. So to get z sub 5, I have to take the 26 that I got down here, plug it back into this equation, 26 squared plus my c value is 1. So 26 squared, I believe is 476 plus 1 makes 477. Except it's not. Let me go back and erase a little bit here. It's actually 576, which makes it 577 for the next number, and so on. So, as you can see, these numbers are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They're getting further and further away from zero. So if you're going to continue this, it would approach infinity, right? If you keep iterating, if you keep taking the answer and putting it back into the equation, 
it's going to approach infinity. So what we say is to be a member of that Mandelbrot set, those numbers have to be bounded whenever you put it into the equation. What that means is that they cannot approach infinity. They have to stay within some certain level, some certain um, interval, okay? So since C is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, C equals 1, we know it's not part of the Mandelbrot set. So let's check to see if C equals negative 1 is a member of that set. So I always start with C sub 0 equaling 0, C sub 1, I'm going to take that 0 and I'm going to square it plus my C value, which is negative 1. 0 squared, 0, plus negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, so to find Z sub 2, I'm going to take this number and I'm going to square it. So negative 1 squared plus negative 1 is equal to, so negative 1 squared is just positive 1, plus a negative 1 is 0. Well, look, I got my 0 back again. So if I plug that thing in, z sub 3 is going to be, I'm going to plug this answer back in, 0 squared plus negative 1. It's going to give me negative 1 again. Can you see how I'm just going to go back and forth between 0 and negative 1? If you can, then you can conclude that the number negative 1 is an element or is a member of the Mandelbrot set. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so you might think that membership in the Mandelbrot set is really limited, as in there can't be a lot of numbers that fit that bill, that it's got to be very exclusive. But if you take a look at these, this picture here, everything that's in black is a member of the Mandelbrot set. Even these little dots right in there. So you do have a lot more answers or a lot more members of the set, it's just that they're going to come within the complex numbers. This means imaginary numbers, and that's exactly what this lesson's about. So this whole thing is an application of what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So as an optional video, right down below here, you should have an embed of a Mandelbrot zoom. What that does is it takes a picture like this one right here and keeps zooming in and zooming in and zooming in, and you see uh, deeper and deeper levels of complexity, and it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's discuss the vocabulary for this section. So first of all, we're talking about numbers, so why not start out with the real numbers? So real numbers are all the numbers that we've talked about so far, and they come in two kinds. We have the rational ones, where you can write them as a fraction, and you have the irrational ones where you can't. So you might have something like 7 halves, and over here you might have the square root of 2. Okay, complex numbers are the ones that have imaginary numbers. Imaginary. I spelled it right this time. Imaginary numbers is part of them. So you can see that right down here, imaginary numbers. So we'll see where these imaginary numbers are going to come from. The imaginary unit is I. Pure imaginary, pure imaginary numbers are the ones that just have I with them. So something like 3I would be a pure imaginary numbers. Absolute value, as we already said, is a distance away from zero. Complex plane looks like an xy coordinate plane, but here are the real numbers, and here are the imaginary numbers. Complex conjugates, here's this word conjugates again. That means similar, but different in some way, opposite in some way. 